Ah, hello, all you lovely ladies and gents. So I just got back from Iringen and what was my first ever World Cup in bouldering. Yeah, I guess to just start things off, the experience was just awesome. Um, we had a great trip, we had a lot of fun. And I gotta say, I have that like little 15 year old gamer kid inside of me who's uh, kind of, who just wasn't expecting <laughs> that I'd ever be at a World Cup. So that was really cool. Um, I think he'd be quite surprised by it. This episode is gonna be a little bit about the lessons that I learned on my first World Cup. Cause I guess with every competition you ever do, <laughs> there's so much to just absorb as a climber. Um, especially for me, who's not really maybe the most technical climber you'd find. I guess we can start off on boulder number one and just walk through him, talk a little bit about what actually happened, why I didn't get the tops, why I didn't get the tops, and um, kind of how my thought process was on them. So to start things off, the first boulder was a slab. I guess in general, I can be somewhat decent on slabs, but this kind of slab, I am way, way, way behind everyone else on. Um, so essentially what you do is you have these delicate, really small foot chips and you're in a kind of cramped up position. I can't really work that. I just don't know how to position my feet and rotate my hips and just get, get pressure in the same way that most other climbers do. So on this boulder, what I needed to work on, what I, what I should have been working on for a while is uh, simply climbing on more slabs, utilizing my feet more on slabs and like getting that kind of feeling on the smaller footholds and just learning how to apply pressure even when it's kind of uncomfortable and doesn't feel so good. Because uh, I mean, nerves play a big part, of course. And when you're standing on small foot jibs, it's not really, you can't just rely on anything aside from skill, <laughs> which, I, which I lack currently. So I guess that's what I'm gonna practice on quite a lot more for the next, for the next competition. I will say though, that one skill that I have is being quite tall. <laughs> and so how I got my first zone ever on a World Cup was on this boulder. And that was through being tall and reaching from the first hold to the actual zone. Um, yeah, <laughs> breaking the beta and being tall is gonna be a pretty good asset, I think, in the coming competitions. <laughs> so enough about that. Let's move over to boulder number two. So as I was approaching this boulder, I thought, oh wow, this looks really, really easy. And this looks like something I definitely should top. The holds at the top were kind of my, my kind of jam, like compression on slopey pinches. And the start looked like like a sidewalk, uh, pretty much. It looked super simple, like just stand up, walk, and then you're done. This turned out to be wrong. <laughs> and I spent five minutes trying to figure out how to move from this uh, like pretty shallow, but also pretty good box up to the zone hold. And I think the biggest issue for me on this boulder was allowing insecurity in myself, in my climbing. Because I think, first off, if I would have tried to just swap the feet and gone more dynamically, I probably could have gotten to the zone hold and then potentially tried the top. And that's the thing, if I would have tried to be more aggressive on it, I think I could have had a much better shot. Because what I was trying to do is go statically, slowly, and just getting that kind of right position in, uh, which just didn't work. And when that doesn't work, you have to be more apprehensive and just go for it. Another thing was, I, I have this issue with the clock when I'm competing. I always look at the clock. I did it on every boulder on this on this competition as well. And like, not just look at the clock and plan, but actually stress about it and think, wow, will I have the time? And this is a big issue because I was, <laughs> actually took a few seconds uh, to change shoes, but I never did. And the other shoes that I have are excellent on these type of volumes. Like you can get so much tension off of them. And like every time when I've changed to those shoes when training, it's a massive difference. I just, I can stand on pretty much any box, I feel like. Whereas with the drones, they're great for pretty much everything. But when you have that like super smeared box, they don't excel quite as well. Uh, and so I took a bunch of time and like didn't change shoes, started getting insecure, is it a good idea? Oh, I only have a minute and a half left to go. Ah, uh, screw it, I'll just go. And in the end, I didn't get the zone on this one, which was a, a big mistake, I'd say. I definitely should have had the skill to do that, but I was kind of letting the insecurities and my own, my own mind get in the way. So ultimately, I just tried a much more burly approach on the boulder and that didn't work and got me completely screwed up. And yeah, as I mentioned, on these type of boulders, it's important to just kind of try things around, experiment and trust yourself. And that's what I was lacking on this boulder. So yeah. That's it for lesson number two. Let's talk about boulder number three. And this one was a, I guess I'd call it my style. At least a lot of it was. 
like the starting holes especially are slopey pinches something i am usually quite strong at i'd say and uh, you didn't have much feet you were pretty much doing like a semi campus move at the start um but you had to use your right foot a little bit just to get the right position and get a little bit of pulling from the from the pinches um but here again the competition nerves kicked in and i started tensing up I'm guessing you can see quite clearly how it's like, it's not really a fluid movement to the first uh, hold, which was honestly almost like a jug. It's a crimp, but it's also a jug uh, in comparison to many of the other holds you would find in a World Cup. So I was just jumping and jumping and jumping, not really getting the hang of it. But I learned something from the previous boulder, and that was to change shoes. So I switched out my shoes, um, which made the first box a little bit better. I got slightly more tension from it. And after, f <laughs> after about four and a half minutes, uh, I finally started to understand what I was going to do. So with only maybe 15 seconds on the clock, I headed up, I made the first move, <laughs> and this is where it gets a little bit funny. So I make the first move, I get my feet up, and then I look at the clock, and I see that I have three seconds left to go. I jump to the zone hold, and then I ultimately get it, and uh, yeah, then the time's out, so I, I jump down. So that was pretty cool. It was, it was lucky that I got the zone, to be honest, and it was good to just have that experience of, of being too tense as well. Uh, to do power, powerful moves, because those are kind of, if you're tense when doing power moves, you're just gonna climb poorly, which is gonna consequently just make you perform badly. So it's really, really important to relax as much as possible, <laughs> but still tense yourself enough so that you can actually do the moves. And finding that balance is something that I can't really learn in, re in a regular gym setting, because I need the pressure and I need to sort of focus on that as much as I possibly can. For boulder number four, I guess I should have mentioned this earlier, but I was actually, I was home uh, like two weeks before the comp. I caught COVID uh, and I was kind of pretty sure that I wouldn't be able to go to the competition because um, first I had the symptoms. I was sick for maybe seven days or something like that, five days, seven days of fever and, and you know, all that not so fun stuff. And then I had two days of training before the competition where I actually got a little bit recruited and I started to understand my body, but I was also home for 10 days in total, which meant that, because it takes about seven to 14 days for your endurance to sort of start uh, lacking and getting worse and worse. <laughs> and that's not good for a powerful boulder where you need endurance, you need to recover well, and that kind of jazz. But I also realized that the power that I had on the competition was probably enough for the boulder to work. However, the endurance was just not there. So I guess I did mess up the bait a little bit at the top and that's another lesson. I definitely got to focus on, on what I'm doing because if you look at the top here, um, there's a small foot jib on the box um, where you went with your right hand earlier. And when I get the right heel up, that's the one I should put my left foot on to just match the left hand, uh, the white, big white hold. Because um, that one was actually quite good, I'd say. Like I could hang on it for maybe, what is it? seven, eight seconds, 10 seconds. So if I would have understood that quick, more quickly, I probably would have had a shot at doing the last move as well. But ultimately I, I slipped off with the left hand and kind of messed it up instead, um, which is of course a bit of a bummer. But yeah, as I mentioned, that's, that's a side note. Like reading beta is <laughs> something I guess every climber has to practice on. For me, I should have thought of it, of it sooner, but I digress. But regarding the power endurance and just endurance in general for the competition, it's just getting back on the endurance train and doing doing exercises, training more, and getting into the kind of the, that mindset again of, uh, of just getting my strength back because it is going to be a little bit of a journey. Yeah, so I guess it's not so much of a lesson since I kind of I had been training endurance before I caught COVID, but it's still something to keep in mind that, that it. I, I guess I'm for myself just accepting that okay, this boulder um, did go worse because of that and. For the next competition, I just gotta get back to it, hope that I have enough endurance, and then maybe do it. This also brings me to boulder number five. Because this powerful boulder number four, <laughs> it took a lot of me. Um, I didn't have much left to give. So after five minutes of resting, I went out on the mat and I could still feel the pump, I could still feel everything being tired, and I was kind of wrecked, um, which is understandable. I mean, I've been climbing a lot more <laughs> than, what, than you should. Uh, in a competition, especially when your endurance already is slow. So on the previous boulders, it would have been more strategic to save energy, give less attempts. Like arguably I got the zones because of, of because I had like a little bit of time. So it's always a trade off. Like I got the zones, but I also wasted a lot of energy, which might've taken a top from the other boulders, who knows? 
Anyways, regardless, it's better to sort of conserve energy most often, I, I feel like. Or at least that's what most climbers do in competitions. So I feel like it, it's probably a good strategy that I just haven't quite adapted to yet. So yeah, again, lesson for number five on the boulder number five uh, was that recovery wasn't good enough. This again brings me back to having to train more endurance and just get back on that train. Um, what, I did, <laughs> what, what, what ultimately gave me the zone on this one was uh, not actual power, but more like pure willpower. I was, it was at the end of the competition. I knew that this was the last one to go and I had uh, maybe 15 seconds when I hopped on the block at the end. Um, so I just forced myself to kind of pull through and get the zone. And that was really cool, that kind of willpower. Like if, if, you, if I just try really, 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 really hard, I have a lot more energy to give. And I think if I would have, if I was better at, at like activating that willpower sooner, I probably could have gotten the zone sooner as well and maybe actually had a, a good attempt at doing the top as well. Because on this bowler, I also timed out, which meant that, you know, I couldn't get to the top even if I had the energy to, um, which honestly, I probably did not. <laughs> and I guess another lesson, but, but this is more of a rookie thing than anything else, um, was that I, I didn't actually know this, but the tape on the on the start was only po uh, like uh, was only on the first box, and there's a second box that's attached to it. So I actually got called down and had a little bit of a conversation about this with the judge because I didn't understand like where I was allowed to start because I was only allowed to start on the lower one and not the upper one, um, and this kind of messed up the mindset for a minute or two. But then I got back to it lesson there is obviously of course that you know <laughs> start on the right holds but also i shouldn't have let it kind of mess up with my mind like yes i wasted maybe 20 seconds or something talking about where i could start but that doesn't really matter i mean 20 seconds here and there if i would have <laughs> if i would have just like dropped it and gone hard tried really hard i probably could have had a better attempt than if i was kind of focusing on okay well this is this is a bummer that i lost seconds because the seconds they are relevant because they will, I mean, obviously those 20 seconds are what, not, what made me get the zone. But I think if I would have tried harder sooner, I could have gotten the zone sooner as well. So those 20 extra seconds might have even been the rest that I needed <laughs> to get the zone as well. Those are some of the lessons that I learned. And I guess one of the biggest ones, and the one that I definitely take with me, is... So I got four zones in total, right? Uh, zero tops, four zones and I missed the one that I thought would be the easiest. In total, I put 21 attempts on these zones, and one of the boulders I got the zone on the first attempt, which meant that for the rest, the three other boulders, I put 20 attempts in uh, to get three zones. So on average, it's a little bit more than, it's almost seven attempts per zone. <laughs> and uh, that's just, that's just wrong. <laughs> like, you shouldn't need that. That probably meant I wasn't trying hard enough from the get-go at getting the zones. I should have given all I got, because the bolts were quite powerful. And if they're powerful and you get them on the seventh attempt, that means you were probably just not trying hard enough and climbing well enough from the start. And uh, that's what I need to practice on. Just having really, really, really good flash burns and loosening my body up and trying to just perform from the first attempt. So it's time for the age old question. How do I feel about the competition and how it went and in all honesty, I feel really happy I mean it could have gone a lot better and it sucked that I got COVID because I it was extremely noticeable in my strength levels um, prior to the competition But regardless of that, I'm happy that I went because I was Seriously considering cancelling it and just not going because I felt that I wouldn't be able to do anything whatsoever but as we can see in this episode like I learned a tremendous amount and the things that I learned from this competition, I'm gonna bring with to the next one. Which means that like, if I wouldn't have even gone there, I would have not learned anything. I would have just been pissy that I didn't get to climb. <laughs> and also, I, I'm actually, I'm a little bit proud of my performance because I, I did perform a lot better than I expected. Yeah, I'm just really, really happy and extremely stoked for the next coming competitions. I mean, now I've had the, the thing. So I can just train, 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 get strong, 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 and then for the next one, which I think is going to be Innsbruck in June, I can just give it absolutely everything I have, try and reach my, my like the best shape of my life before then. So yeah, I'm just stoked. It was awesome. An awesome experience that I'm really, really happy about. I think we're going to end it there. 
if you kind of like the video and you want to hear more about competition climbing or climbing in general, outdoors, etc., and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then subscribe. If you liked it, then please give a thumbs up. It does help the video grow and it does help me grow, which is something I appreciate. <laughs> and then if you have any questions about the competition or if you wanna like ask me anything, then drop me a comment and I'll try and respond to as much as, as, much as I can. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.